Hello ladies and mental chain and welcome to another HD review. Today we're looking at the Fosh Tank Destroyer, the AMX50 Fosh Tier 9 French Tank Destroyer. And I remember back in the day when I was grinding this line, that was a long, long time ago. This was the only, well, the first real highlight in the grind. The first tank that didn't suck fucking massive dick. Sadly, that has changed. This tank is so fucking god awful now. Let's find out why in the next, uh, what, five to ten minutes. All right, so let's start with the armor. You have a 180 upper plate angled reasonably well, as you can see. But you can still pen this with tier 10s half the time, just straight through the upper plate. You also have a lower plate that every tier 8 can pen. Then you also have these massive weak spots that peak before you do. That 150 armor that every light tank can pen. Th this one is slightly better and it can bounce some shots, but it's still not very good and generally doesn't bounce shit. Then the gunman lead is pretty okay, but it's kind of small, so it's a bit irrelevant. Uh, and then we have the 40 side armor, so any gun above uh, above 120 millimeter caliber will be able to auto pen your side which is hilarious, which means that you can bounce the upper plate in order to get more effective. Uh, so, you know, the armor is terrible, generally. Like, obviously, all the heat shots are just gonna pen straight through this. All the AP shooters will know either to shoot the lower plate or that, and you can't hide both at the same time. Fell, you can't hide this weak spot ever. Generally, if you can see your enemies, they can see this before you can see them, which means that they're starting to aim way before you do. But I'm pretty sure that's all there is to really say about this uh, armor profile, so let's just move up to uh, to the game. Also, there is an uh, overmatch on the roof, so they don't even need to hit your weak spot. If, they, if you aim like this and hit this part, it's gonna be an overmatch, because it's only 30 mil, so unless you have a, a gun below 90 mil in caliber, you'll just overmatch the roof as well, as it is a massive target to get one-shotted by Artie. Now we're gonna get into the replay. Alright, we're playing Malinovka, but first as always, let's get through the stats. We're comparing this to an SU-12254, the Russian tier 9 TD. So, we start off with 1550 hit points, mirror range of 380, top speed forwards 50, backwards 13, power to weight of 19.93, tank traverse 29.20, effective traverse slightly better than that, but still worse than on the Russian. Soft stats really bad on this across the board on every possible way. Gun elevation 18, gun depression 6, gun traverse minus 10 plus 10, so 20 is not too terrible, but it's on the bad side for sure. It's better than on the 2 6 or the 1 2 2 54. And then we come to the fucking biggest disaster of all time. This gun is so shit. So, first of all, we start off with 2691 DPM on a tier 9 tank destroyer that has 400 alpha damage, 257 pen. And 2.21 second aiming time, which in real life feels like 5.6. But, you know, you have 0.32 accuracy with terrible soft stats. This isn't shell velocity, but this DPM. To put it in perspective, like generally every DD that doesn't have a massive gun has over 3k DPM. Every one of them. The only exception to that, I think... Well, no, there's no exception to that, really. I mean, the, the closest ones to this is the 704, who has still higher DPM at like 2700 something. And the T95 is slightly lower with, than this, but it's a T95, that you kind of would expect that. And the thing here is, like, this tank would be balanced if, uh, if this armor actually was anywhere, like, relevant to anything. But it is not, it just doesn't work. You have massive weak spots on the top you have the lower plate you have overmatch side armor like you have nothing going for it armor wise and because of this armor profile like i can see like you know if you're heavily really heavily armored the, with good dpm it could be a bit broken but it is not heavily armored and it, this gun is the worst absolutely the worst gun of any tier 9 td by a massive amount as well because like the one to two fifty four. While it does have slightly worse aiming time on paper, the soft stats on that are so much better. And whenever I, I actually move somewhere, you can just see how ridiculously huge the aiming circle is for 
fuck knows what reason really like look at this i turn a bit and and then when we stop let's just start counting how much does it take no we don't start aiming there oh here maybe look at this shit not aimed yet uh, we didn't even aim in ten, until the end but anyways the aiming time on this is so abysmally huge for 400 alpha damage like why would you do that why and the funny part is that this tank is already in HD, so they have updated uh, updated it to the current version of the game. And, you know, in the old version, this used to be okay, right? It had, like, the armor was actually relevant, because not every tank in the game had, like, fucking 270 pen. And not everybody was spamming gold. Uh, that is also uh, true. So this was, you know, as I said, the first decent TD in this line of utter disasters. And... Now it just joins the line as another one of the after disasters, uh, followed by the tier 10, which is exactly the same really. One thing you do get going for you is the mobility, but uh, even then, like, you cannot really use that mobility because you cannot play aggressive the second you get spotted. I mean, this tank doesn't have any armor, like, you just cannot rely on it, you cannot play with it, it's just literally not there. And that's really kind of how you have to play, you have to jerk off in the back. And, you know, in cases where it allows you to, well, where the enemy team allows you to be more aggressive, you have to push up and try to, uh, try to, you know, actually do something to get some XP to get rid of this shit and get to the next shit. And we have set up here, we did some blind shooting, we did hit the TF4 once, but that's pretty much all I've done so far. And at the moment, I'm not gonna be bothered to really push up or do anything else, because... We know there's a 140 there, we don't want to cross while he's still there. Uh, it seems that the enemy team completely abandoned the hill though, they didn't really try to play, the two tanks that were there were picked up very quickly, and now we just need to find out where the 140, or whether the 140 is there or not, and he is not, so it is time to push up and uh, try to spot, because clearly the gun on this is so useless that you don't really want to use it. It's kind of similar to on, like on the 1390, the gun is so shit, that you re literally only use it in the end game because you know you uh, the the only thing you're gonna get going for you while shooting that gun is gonna get uh, uh, gonna get you spotted and you're gonna cry every time because you shot your gun and that's generally how this tank works as well. Uh, generally, like you, when you're actually aimed at something, that something is either dead or not spotted anymore. Like generally in this game as well, but. Uh, yeah, we're gonna push up here, try to do some spotting. As I said, spotting is the only thing I really care of, and like if we get some shots in between that, that that's cool. Uh, I do pick up spotting on the 140, and that doesn't look like I'm in a lot of cover, so I fuck off uh, reasonably quickly. And luckily for me, I don't take uh, an E100 or something like that shell right in the face. Get some more spotting. So, yeah, the only thing I've really done in this game is get some spotting on dudes that were spotted. We really need that IS-7 to shoot the 140, which he does end up doing in the end while taking a big shot in the face as well. So we're going back to our position that didn't work too well at the start, but maybe now we can actually do some spotting here. Pushing up a bit further this time so we can actually work from this bush properly. And we do spot an ISU right in the middle of the open, and what do we do? Critical hit on the side of a fucking ISU. Feels feels good, man. Feels good. And at this point, you really gotta be wondering, how the fuck was this an ace? Because it was an ace, actually, in the end. So we do not manage to aim for the RD in time to, to shoot him, as you would expect. And now we're gonna go get our ace. As I said, similar to the 1390, this tank is so useless at shooting with this gun that you gotta do spotting. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. We know that they have a lot of big heavy tanks here and they're probably all there. And yeah, there they are. We slow down a bit to aim and look at this aiming time. That is atrocious. And I didn't even aim fully. I of course got penned because they could just overmatch my side and I had to show my side in order to not get penned by the E100. So yeah, good stuff, overmatched by tier 8, feels good man, feels good armor, definitely worth the terrible DPM. And now as a strong player I am, I just sit by this house and do fucking nothing, and get a nice tanker while doing it, because that's how the good players play, they just sit behind houses, do fucking nothing with their life, 
and get a shitload of spotting. Like I am getting here, the STRV gets killed, the E100 gets shot in the face a lot, and we are already at 4.7k spotting, and that is not even close to the end of uh, the enemies. 5.2 uh, going up in the world, um, really exciting gameplay right here, uh, really how you should be playing your tier 9 French tank destroyer. Uh, that we're gaming forgot to give a gun uh, to. Now we are gonna peek these IS-3s. One of course pens me with his AP because you know this tank has armor uh, and the other one luckily for me bounces. I should be able to out reload him and I am going for that and we do manage to do that just barely. He did, does track me but I still have the red bear kit so we're gonna pick another shot in here and push up as we should be able to nail that. I mean, he should die reasonably quickly to somebody else, so maybe I can finish him off. And that's exactly what happens. All right, so the last E100 left alive. We're gonna not take the shot, because let's be real, like my chances of dying are very high. We have bounced like two shots in this game. One of them was an E100 shot, and because of that bounce, I'm still alive. The E100 shoots somebody else, so I should have an easy time penning him here. And one thing I gotta give this tank, unlike the 263, the gun at the front is good for peeking corners. And the E100 dies. Alright, so here we have the end plate. Ace tanker, no fucking medals. Could have gotten patrol duty, but I didn't. Uh, get 2707 damage done, 6610 assisted, picked up one kill and... 1295 base experience so there you have it how to play french tds don't use your gun unless you really have to or you can get some free damage in at some points but generally just sit and spot like you're a light tank because this gun is terrible and the guns in french tds in general are fucking horrible throughout the tiers uh, i don't know who the fuck did the hd model on this who the fuck thought this is a good balancing but uh, it truly is not. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is just another tank from a line that you should avoid like plague. But I hope you enjoyed my rant and my replay cast review thingy. And I'll see you on the next one.